This is a D drum 4 electronic drum machine, which I took a look at many years ago prior to the whole YouTube thing, and it has an issue where it will very rarely, very intermittently, not start properly. And back then, I think I replaced a, a main power cap in the power supply, and I believe I kind of redid some solder joints. I, I wasn't as good as at, at what I'm doing as I am today. So, the way this thing behaves, normally when you start it up, it's supposed to say PAL here on the little display, and uh, when it's acting up, it uh, doesn't do that. And uh, according to the owner of this thing, it uh, he fixed it by beating at it with a drumstick. So, let's see how it behaves today, if we can get any life out of it. Oh, power switches down there. And, uh, pal, there we go. It is working absolutely as intended. And I don't think we're gonna be able to recreate the issue. So, what we're gonna do is take this thing apart and I know it's got some socketed processors and uh, this thing gets thrown around a lot. It is an, it's actually surprisingly good nick dis uh, despite that fact. Uh, and it often gets stored in like barns and dusty places and it sees a lot of use on the cruise ships going to the island I live on as well. So it sees a fair amount of salty air, uh, making it an excellent victim for corrosion. And I'm, I'm rather willing to bet but if we just sold those socketed processes in, uh, this thing is never going to see the issue again. So, let's just get it apart. Alright, so here you can see what I believe to be the root cause of the problem. We have got the firmware dip sitting in one of these really dodgy uh, single-sided sockets which are not very known for their decent quality contacts. And over here on the other side in the page like you can see my old repair. It is, uh, I believe these were actually stock uh, but I added a couple of caps there to uh, just stabilize it up a bit because it had a fair amount more ripple on the rails than I would like to see. So, uh, well, I'm just going to remove this socket, solder that chip straight onto the board, since uh, that is just such an obvious uh, possible failure mode that uh, uh, I might as well do it. The owner obviously has no intention of replacing that anytime soon. Alright, so that would be the firmware, drum sound, whatever EEPROM, it's all directly onto the board, and that is what I do believe will fix the issue. I also gave it a bit of a cursory measure around, I checked all the capacitors, uh, they all measure fine as I would expect since this is a kind of device which we'll see uh, many rough tires being moved around uh, and thrown around uh, but it won't see too many hours of operation and that's what generally wears your caps out. So uh, yeah I can't really see any uh, real obvious faults with this thing. Uh, last time I gave it a proper knock around while having it powered. Yeah this time I'm just going to put it back together and give it another proper knock around. Uh, to see if we can make it act up by just physically manipulating it. I'm thinking we're not going to be able to since uh, the customer has never complained about any issues when it's actually powered on. 
they've only complained about issues when it uh, is starting up and uh, getting that bad connection or issue just as it is pairing up is basically an impossible feat with a problem with this intermittent. So yeah, let's just get it back together and see if it lives. Well, just have to see how it performs in the real world. Bit of isopropyl in all of the connectors for good measure. I'm not too concerned about uh, reproducing the issue, I'm more concerned about just seeing it since I don't really have time to give this thing a proper super thorough diagnostic run. If, we, if we're going to get it to power up without issues a few times, I'm going to call it decently good. All right, here comes the power. And it's booting up just fine. No issues at all. Can we knock it dead? No, it doesn't seem to be dying. Still boots just fine. We'll give it a couple more beat up attempts. Yeah, that's going to be pairing up just fine. I'm not sure if it gives a version info when it's having the issue, but this is working perfectly. We'll give it a knock out while it's powered off. Powered on, yeah booting up as new. So I think at this stage I'm just going to put this back together, give it back to its owner and we'll just have to see how it does. Uh, because the last time it was in here it was supposedly having rather severe issues. I just cleaned this connector out then and it's been several years since and it worked just fine. So yeah, it does, the EEPROM, whatever you have there, does come out as a rather obvious suspect, an intuitively correct suspect. So, here's to hoping, back together it goes. Alright, yeah, that's everything back together. This is where I plug it in and it has the issue. Here we go. And it powers on just fine. Pal. Let's just press all the buttons a bit. Uh, ruin all the settings. Just in case some of this stuff is acting up. Power off. Power on runs like a charm. Takes forever to boot up though. Granted this thing seems to be 16 years old based on the label inside. All right, final test. Let's just hook this up to a stereo, headphone out, and see if we'll get any audio. That seems to be running just fine. Oh, I don't know how to play the drums. Makes sound. I'm gonna call that a day. Ooh, that's nasty. Jesus. Probably because it was just paired on, it did have time to discharge the caps. 
Ugh, no. It just goes bang bang when you boot it up, but that's just for headphone output. So, gonna call the guy, say that I've done what I can do for the time being. He has to try it again live, and if it fails, it fails. We'll have it back. So that's it. That's uh, what I have chosen to do to this intermittently failed, uh, what is it, D-Drum 4 SE Signature Edition. So thank you for watching. Cheerio.